These are the most inappropriate moments in football history. And first, we got a moment so inappropriate, it almost got a fan a lifelong stadium ban. Turns out that wasn't any regular fan, but a former boxing world champion. Even he couldn't knock Holland to the ground. But the next guy took inappropriate to a whole new level. Hey, there comes an idiot to tell them. He's a blow to come. Weet je wel wat weer het is? En dat je dit soort flauwe kunnen niet moet doen? Ja, wie gaat er achteraan? En waar pak je hem dan? Hij is gek. Het zal een wetenschap zijn. Maar oh, wat dom. <laughs> That's nuts. And uh, these nuts need some cooling off. <laughs> what is Donati doing there? But that wasn't as inappropriate as the next moment, when Vertonghen used a very unique defense method. <laughs> now that's a creative way to stop your opponent. But what's even smarter is just throwing their shoe off the pitch. Look, that guy just stepped on his shoe here. Suarez goes to the ground and dude tries to take off his shoe as well. Now Suarez is being overdramatic and begging for a free kick. But then the other guy just throws it off the field? What? Come on, man. You can't do that. But that's not as inappropriate as what this barber did. You know, I only get a haircut. I did, yeah, but I want the new one. I want like what an owl does here. Ronaldo. Yeah. Soon. You sure? Yeah, hurry up. I'm going to a party tonight. All right. Soon. All right. Done. What do you think? One sec, just send the message there, yeah? What's that? Now that was an honest mistake, but Erling Holland was caught straight up lying to millions of people. Cause during his impulsive episode, Mike Malik asked him an interesting question. Did you ever get tempted to go to a nightclub? Or like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I have a summer break on around a month. I uh, eat some bad food as well. Like, uh, <laughs> like what? Like what? No, I said before, kebab pizza. I love it. It's so good. Kebab. Uh, in the vacation, I try not to, I try to relax and just to like completely relax, don't do a lot of things because we've got like basically 10 months uh, focusing on performing on the pitch, you know, so uh, you have to have a bit, a couple of weeks where you don't do a lot of things, but really to go out on a nightclub uh, today, I don't really, I couldn't be asked really to, to go out and, and do that. Uh. Hold up, bro. You couldn't be asked? My man was spotted throwing it down in a dormant tracksuit a couple years ago, and he even got kicked out of a nightclub in Norway. Come on, Erling, just cut the act. We know you love the party. But not all inappropriate moments are as funny, because what Southampton fans did after the devastating plane crash that killed Emiliano Sala is one of the most shameful incidents ever caught on camera. The 28-year-old Argentinian striker was on his way from France to the UK to complete a 15 million pound deal with Cardiff when suddenly his aircraft disappeared from the radar. Hundreds of people were searching for the plane and Mbappe even donated 26,000 pounds to fund a private search. And after two weeks of looking, everyone's worst nightmare became a reality. The Argentinian footballer Emiliano Sala, well, he was unexpectedly and tragically killed in a plane crash as he was traveling by plane from Nantes to the Welsh capital. Everyone was heartbroken and what was supposed to be a beautiful memorial for Salah ended up in a disaster. Because when Cardiff played their first game after hearing the news, some horrible Southampton fans decided to make airplane gestures. Luckily, the guys were arrested and given a three-year stadium ban. But that's not as inappropriate as the time a football player was hit by his ex in a car or the kiss that caused a worldwide controversy. But first, we gotta address the fan that racked up over two million views on YouTube, made front pages all over the UK, and even ended up inside a courtroom. It was the 16th of August, 2014. West Ham versus Spurs. Upton Park Stadium had room for about 35,000 fans, and one of them was 22-year-old Jordan Dunn. But instead of just enjoying the game like everyone else, Jordan downed a couple beers and decided to fulfill his childhood dream. So when the Spurs were given a free kick at the edge of the box... Jordan was fined 
305 pounds, but spared a ban from attending future games because he swore to never do it again. And the funniest thing about that free kick is that it was actually better than the one Christian Eriksen took after Jordan was taken off the field. Some even compared him to David Beckham, which can't be said about Noah Lang, who received one of the worst hate letters ever after arriving at his new club. Have you seen Vanderpool? He's an amazing cyclist with real character. That's something you don't have. Vanderpool is a nice guy with decent hair, nice teeth, no tattoos on his neck, and not a big mouth like you have. Take an example out of him. Are you up already, Noah, or are you rotting in bed? I'm deeply ashamed that you play for my club, PSV, but it's only for a couple months until you start a fight and boss kicks you out of the squad, because you don't have what Vanderpool has. Character and balls, loser. Now, as painful as that might have been, it's not as bad as having a physical altercation with a fan like Eric Dyer. You can't leave the field to play as a player and go into the stands, right? No matter what happens, and vice versa. You're not allowed to leave the stands as a supporter and jump onto the field and play. Yeah, right after the final whistle of a lost FA Cup game in 2020, the England midfielder decided to storm into the stands, make his way all the way to the top, and confront the man who was allegedly giving his little brother a hard time. Hundreds of fans panicked and rushed towards the exit, which caused a ton of chaos. Luckily, no punches were thrown, but Dyer was given a four-match ban and a 40,000-pound fine. But that's nothing compared to what Luis Rubiales is facing after causing a worldwide controversy. Spain's Football Federation has asked its president Luis World Cup final. Yeah, after the Spanish national team won the World Cup, FA President Luis Rubiales kissed midfielder Jenny Hermoso without consent. And just to be clear, we as the offside team do not tolerate any form of sexual misconduct. So we and the rest of the world were shocked. But things got really heated when Jenny explained in a live stream on Instagram that she wasn't comfortable with what just happened, and the incident then made the front pages of every newspaper in Spain. Marca Sports newspaper saying that this is a global mess, a global global embarrassment and another one here comparing this to the Me Too movement saying that the whole situation has now turned into the Me Too movement of Spanish football. But the story doesn't stop there. 81 female players have stated they won't play for the national team as long as Rubiales is around. Xavi expressed his support to Jenny. Thousands of people went onto the streets to protest, and FIFA even suspended Rubiales from all football-related activities for 90 days. But he still refuses to resign as president and claims this has now become a personnel. Today, the mother of Luis Rubiales announced she's locked herself in a church in Spain and is on a hunger strike in protest against what she's calling the inhuman hunt against her son. This story is far from over, so make sure to subscribe if you want to know how it ends. And now, I've saved the craziest and most inappropriate story for last. Because just imagine being purposely ran over by your ex-girlfriend in a car. Yeah, the story of Jesse Rodriguez is crazier than anything we've seen so far. The kid who was once considered the next Cristiano Ronaldo and lifted the Champions League twice fell off harder than any other player I know. It all started one minute into Real versus Schalke as he went towards the corner flag and got hit by Kolasinac. Looking at his face, it was obvious things were serious. His interior cruciate ligament was torn to pieces, and he needed surgery as soon as possible. He wouldn't be able to play for months, and like that wasn't bad enough, he also had to be carried out of his house by firemen because his apartment caught on fire the same week. Sounds like rock bottom, right? Well, turns out rock bottom has a basement. Because instead of focusing on his recovery, dude started spitting bars in the studio and releasing music videos. To his coach Ancelotti, it seemed clear that football wasn't his main priority anymore, so he didn't give him much playtime when he was recovered. But instead of putting in the work and getting back in the shape, Hesse threatened to leave the club because he felt like he deserved more minutes. And even though Ancelotti left and different coaches replaced him in the seasons after, nothing much changed. So together with his new girlfriend, Ora Ruiz, who we'll talk about in a second, he finally left Madrid in 2016 and transferred to Paris for 25 million euros. But before he can impress his new team, he was confronted with an unexpected expected Instagram post from his ex. And instead of just accepting the child as his own, he claimed the child wasn't his. He called his ex a liar and demanded a DNA test. And guess what? You are the father. So after a rocky start in Paris and a lack of form, Unai Emery sent him on loan to his childhood club Los Palmas and later Stoke City. In the years after he had a child with Aura, but the couple broke up shortly after giving birth and Aura
Laura sued Hesse for neglecting their child, to which he countersued her for purposely lying under oath and destroying his reputation. As a result of all of this drama and never showing up to training, Stoke City had no other choice but to ban him from the club, loan the Real Betis, and later Sporting, where he had another kid with his new girlfriend to then be officially sacked from Sporting and PSG after breaking COVID regulations during the pandemic. So yeah, Hesse was digging his own grave and rock bottom had a whole new meaning. During all of this, the lawsuit against Aura was still active until the judge sentenced her to nine days of community service. It seemed like their crazy story finally came to an end, but right after hearing the sentence, the two were spotted kissing outside the courtroom and announced they were back together. But the story is about to take an even crazier twist, because shortly after, Hesse was spotted limping away after being hit by Aura's car and her quickly fleeing the scene. They both denied the crash ever happened, stating, I've not run anyone over. It's a lie and very serious, and I'm not going to allow people to say I've run my partner over. I know a lot of things have happened between us that we're not proud of, but we love each other, and I never wanted to run him over. I know I lose my head sometimes, but this? How am I going to do something to the father of my child? Are we all mad? But that statement wasn't very believable, since witnesses clearly recognized both of them, and the incident happened right outside a stadium where the two were spotted watching a concert together. All of this sounds like a pretty toxic relationship, but the only two that don't realize that are Aura and Hesse themselves. So to top it all off, the couple got married and had another kid together. That's just ridiculous, man. And so are these moments. Click this video right here.